Welcome back to Adam Sawatari Extreme. Some exciting news for all of you. I'm heading up north to see some people that I haven't seen for quite some time and hang with Christian. I decided to take all of you along with me. I was very excited because my plan was to take the SV and that would have been one hell of a road trip. As all of you know, I have very little time to enjoy my toys. But that plan had to be changed because my wife and my daughter decided that they wanted to join me on the trip. This of course would make it quite difficult to take the SV. One of course because it's a two-seater and two because it doesn't fit a child seat. Therefore, when my daughter came about, Honda was nice enough to help me with an MDX. So we will be taking something that is much more functional, just not quite as exciting or fun. But this does mean one good thing, and that is when my daughter decides to spill food and drinks all over the vehicle, I don't have to have a coronary. We're going to try and get out of here to get up north, and hopefully we'll only be five hours late as opposed to our usual ten hours. Possibly you guys could help me out, those of you that have families. Please comment below on your strategies to get your families to appointments and locations on time because I sure as heck haven't figured that out for myself. I'll give them a call right now, see if we can get everything down here, get packed up, and hit the road. So my first stop here is with a longtime friend, Kari Inyoshi, who has been an event promoter since the mid 90s and also actually helped me campaign the seven so i wanted to come and talk to him so you guys could meet him and also get some valuable information that he could possibly pass on carrie how you doing my friend how's everything going i'm okay better because i have my caffeine fix understood my man understood Carrie, with all your infinite knowledge, a lot of my, a lot of my viewers are starting to build uh, their cars and their vehicles. With all your information you have, what can you share with them about the best way to maximize their budget to compete well in shows? Huh, that's a good question. You know, so the thing about maximizing budget is I would honestly tell people to start off from the, from the very beginning, start off doing it right. A lot of people, they tend to try to like create a budget and spend money within their budget and a lot of times it's uh starting off kind of small so they do like replica wheels or you know fake parts i highly recommend not doing that especially if you want to get in the car show scene um, people that win car shows or win awards and stuff like that are people with originality um uniqueness high quality, like great paint jobs, um, fit finish, that kind of stuff. Like you're not going to win a car show by having like fake parts, replica parts. So if you're going to build a car show quality car, start with really good quality parts. Um, and then try to find a builder. If you don't build it yourself, try to find a builder that's really reputable. Do everything right from the beginning because a lot of people start off with like cheap parts, cheap builds, and then they have to go back and rebuild it later. So if, you can, if, if that's your goal to win car shows, um, just start right. Yeah, that's, that's the best advice I can give you. There's no real bang for the buck in, in, in when it comes to building car show stuff. Well, there you go, guys, a wealth of knowledge. So since we're up here, Kerry, I hardly ever hang with you, my man. What have you been up to? I mean, I haven't been up here in a oh, long time. Yeah, so as you see, as you can see, like, um, I ditched the, you, you remember back in the day, I had the Supra and the, so I went through Supra, AE86, uh, MR2 Turbo, uh, Eric Shin's Civic that was built up. I, I acquired his for a little while. Then I had our ISF, LS460, GSF Sport, built all those, kind of got rid of them because I had kids, so now I drive a, a daily a van. Um, <laughs> hey, was, all uh, of you out there that are going to have kids, you're going to love these things. He's a wealth of knowledge of that as well. Uh, built it um, originally for Cusco and Boston. Um, then the year after, uh, Spider Lighting wanted to display that SEMA, so we did a whole uh, new look. We went with the wrap. It's super dirty right now um, because uh, I daily it again, but uh, it was wrapped by my buddies at 68 Auto Detail. Um, my buddy David at VIP Modular, David and An, helped me get the wheels. UAS suspension over RSR, um, City Cruiser hood, 
aero kit, a bunch of other parts um, built by Speed Element, which is over here. Also do food trucks. Um, as you can see, we have Hawaiian honey cones here. My next uh, food truck project will be over there. And uh, you want to go take a look at some show cars? Sure, man. Show us cool. what you got. So this is Speed Element, uh, one of the premier shops over in uh, San Jose. We're getting ready for Week Fest, which is tomorrow. Uh, Week Fest San Jose is probably the biggest import uh, car event. They call it the premier automotive gathering. That's tomorrow. Um, and if you guys want to see or follow them, Week Fest USA. Um, this is Kyle's car. He's not here yet, it's a little early, but he's going to uh, be competing with this car. And this is, uh, you're gonna, this is probably the first video that this car has been in since it's got out. Um, All right, guys, you hear that? We got an exclusive on this car. So uh, this is, we call him Meow, but his name is Fong. And uh, some of the older car show guys may know him um, as Blurple. He had a, an award-winning um, three series that was uh, custom wide bodied and it won like Blocks Evolutions, Best of Show, um, Spolcom, he won at Spolcom. So that car is somewhere over, I think, in uh, Texas? Texas? Yeah, Texas. And so while that's being taken apart and being built, we haven't seen it in a couple of years, he decided to take his uh, somewhat daily and turn it into a show car, uh, freshly painted. A bunch of carbon fiber parts on it, custom stereo, custom roll cage, like a whole bunch of parts are in it. Check out the wheels. He just got those done. Um, wow, take a look at those guys. Yeah, so you know how like I was saying about um, if you're going to build a show car, do it right from the beginning. You can take some advice from Fong and this is what he's done. Like no cheap parts. Um, Custom, these are custom chromed. Who did the chroming? Uh, this shop in LA. Okay. And, uh, you know, like check out the steering wheel as well. Where'd you get the steering wheel from? Uh, that is a personal GT wheel that we did custom carbon fiber and suede on. Yeah, see, so it's, uh, it's a custom built steering wheel. So this is the kind of stuff like at car shows would get you more points because it's um, something that's done specifically for this car. It's not like it's a off the shelf, you can buy it on eBay or, or whatever. Um, that's kind of what you wanna do when you build a show car, in my opinion anyway. I'm not saying that that's the right way to go, but when the judges are judging cars and they're looking for stuff, when they see original stuff like this that no one else has, you usually get better points. Now bro, you definitely have all the inside track on this. And this car was done at a first class level. But you and I both know there are places that people can do modifications that save money where everything doesn't matter. I know this car being first class, what about the people that just don't have the budget to do it that way? Where are the places you can hide it and get away with it and still get your points? So that would be visual. Um, a lot of times uh, your fit and finish is key. Um, if you buy parts that don't fit very well, um, they look at that. So if you're going to buy if you're going to buy budget parts, at least make sure they fit good. Um, and if you're going to do DIY stuff, that saves you some money. But do some research on how to do it correctly. Um, for example, like suspension. A lot of people just buy off-the-shelf suspension and they try to like dump it. Um, make sure you use quality parts. Uh, you can buy used maybe. Um, that's another way to go budget. But honestly, when it comes to car show and builds and stuff like that, it's hard to find like um, stuff that qualifies as like builds on a budget or budget builds or balling on a budget, I guess you, you could say. You can't ball on a budget. I'm sorry, but that's, that's just not possible. But I mean, that, that's just my opinion again. But uh, yeah, that's the best advice I can give. I'm, I'm sorry if I can't give you like better advice on where to buy cheap stuff and where to go cheap to build a car show quality car, but that's just, being real it's like gary v says you know like the kind of stuff that he says don't don't spend money when you can't afford it guys i don't know about you but basically the main thing i took away from that is no balling on a budget so i guess i don't know we'll have to figure out an alternative plan but today we've got a very busy day 
and Carrie's also a very busy man. So of course we're gonna end up hanging out with Christian for a while, but Carrie has a few surprises for me and I have no idea what they are. So we gotta go hit the road. Carrie, my man, thank you so much for taking some time to hang with us. We really appreciate it, brother. And let's hit the road and see what we can find. Guys, Carrie has walked away and I had a moment to talk with Fong from Speed Element and he's got the inside scoop on some stuff that can help you. Fong, my man, please tell my guys what can possibly help them. Yeah, well, just to add to what Carrie said about balling on a budget, sometimes you don't have to go big and still get a lot of point value, like these canards right here. Most of the time, people just double side tape these guys. But you go on Amazon and you find these little hobby bolts, these gold bolts and these washers for like 10 bucks on Amazon. And when the judges see this, they're like, dang, that guy went the extra mile. Well, guys, look at that. The inside tip from an award-winning show winner. Fong, thank you so much, brother, for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll no see problem, you next man. time, my man. Thanks. Take see care. Bye-bye. All right, guys, and let's roll. Well, I'm on the road, and as you can see, we're not in the shop as we typically are, but I have some really exciting stuff. I came to see a shop called Blocks, and something crazy happened. I don't know if all, any of you have seen the Donut Media video with legendary Honda racer Dave Shi, but he is right here in front of me. My friends, <laughs> check it out. The man Hi, in the flesh. Dave does usually not give interviews, so I'm so lucky, and he's such a great friend. But Dave, please tell us, how have you been, my man? And I'm what's doing, going on? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Life is good. Very good, man. Yeah. And we're, I noticed we're here at Blocks. Uh -huh. What is your involvement with Blocks? So we started at Blocks uh, about 15 years ago as a project to learn a little bit about manufacturing, marketing, and everything else that goes along with starting your own small business. And here we are 15 years later, still doing good. <laughs> that is so awesome, man. And what type of products exactly does Blocks manufacture? We primarily cater to the Honda Acura market. Uh, everything from camshafts, engine components, to suspension, to accessories, shift knobs, and everything else in between. Very good, my man. Well, I know you're a very busy man, and I really appreciate you spending some time with us. But back here at the end side, Everyone really wants to know, on all the racing and all the experience, do you miss it? I do, once in a while, but you know, raising a family became the new priority after you know, having a kid at age 21. So um, racing is still in my blood and hopefully one day we'll be able to get back into it, but not holding in my breath anytime soon. <laughs> Dave, you're a Honda legend, and a lot of my viewers are just getting started. What advice can you give them to get into racing, to be successful like yourself? I think the best advice I can give is find a mentor and don't quit. Stick at it and eventually everything will work out. Oh man, that is some of the best advice I've heard. Guys, we are so fortunate to be able to talk to Dave. He hardly ever gives an interview to anybody, <laughs> and I'm just so happy that we've been friends for so long. Dave. Thank you so much for Thank time. You I really for appreciate coming it. Out. All right, brother. I'll Thank see you next time. Thank you. Okay, guys, I noticed that the gate was open to block. So after I signed off from Dave, I walked back here, and lo and behold, I ran into Mike Choi. For those of you that do not know Mike Choi, he was a man behind the scenes that helped make Battle the Imports one of the most successful import drag racing organizations on the planet, which also helped make my name. Mike, my friend, hey, how are hey. you doing? I'm doing okay. Oh man, great to see you, my friend. Long How's time everything no see. going? Good, man. let me put this how down. How have you been and what's going on? Oh, just working here. Uh, blocks racing, as you can see, uh, we got a couple things going on. Typical day, winding down, cleaning up a little bit here. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. And, you know, during those years, I've come up uh, here up north and I've been managing Blocks Racing uh, for the past 15 years. Man, it is so great to see you, my friend. What yeah, is going on with Battle of the Imports? Are you still involved with that? Is your brother still running the show? Well, Battle of the Imports, uh, we haven't had an event, uh, I think, since 2012. So it's been a couple years. Um, Frank technically would still be the head of that, and he's based uh, still in Southern California. Uh, we decided, at least back then, um, a lot of the stuff going on with the economy at that time um, and the OEMs and whatnot uh, made sense to kind of hold off for a season. 
Um, and since then, it's rolled into now 2000, almost the end of 2019. So, yeah, I think uh, overall, I think uh, the, the run is, is over and uh, we're both content on how everything went since 1990 when we had our first event. Man, I love battles so much. It's so reminiscent for me and seeing you has just been a great experience. I sure am going to miss battle, but you know, you're an expert in this avenue. Do you, can you give any advice to new and upcoming racers on what to do to prepare if they're going to go to any sort of drag race and sanctioned event? Well, first of foremost, I think the most important thing for anyone out there is to start off with some kind of budget. Um, regardless of what kind of car it is. Um, obviously, if you have a budget, you have a place to start, right? And obviously you have a game plan. Um, a lot of kids nowadays, um, you know, still in the Hondas, which is great, what drives the market, I, I think still the whole aftermarket, um, as far as like the OEMs. But there's other models that are uh, end makes that are now um, a good part of it, Subaru, Toyota. Um, but like I said, any car, that anyone wants to start with is important to have a budget and obviously a plan on how to spend that budget as wisely as possible. Well, there you have it. From an <laughs> expert that I've known for a very long time, as you can see, Mike is a very busy man running this operation. So we really appreciate him spending some time out of his day to give us that wealth of knowledge. Mike, my friend, it was so great seeing you. Adam, it's been thank forever. you so much, man. Yeah. Well, there you go, my friends. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up so we can head to our next location. I hope you are happy with all this great content I've been able to bring you. Oh, guys, boy, man, you are so lucky that I've taken you on this road trip and we are going to get to talk to one of my favorite people on the planet, <laughs> YouTube superstar Christian No, which you know from all my videos and all of you have been asking about him. Really on his own channel, he needs no introduction, but he really is a man. My friend and the man here. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? So Welcome every to Adam's channel. What are we going to be doing today? My friend, my, my viewers have a few questions, so okay. if it's okay with you, I will pass them on. Absolutely, let's go. All right, so taking a look at what we got here, can you tell us about the path of your super success in YouTube? That is a good question. So the path, honestly, it kind of just happened. I can't really explain the path, but it really just started out as just this big group of friends in San Jose that just had dope ass cars and we all just kind of attracted each other and we kind of we always talked about how like we just felt like we were meant to be you know in one place and we did and Randy Trung started YouTube and then things happened we all we all just kind of like just gained traction on the YouTube community just by being ourselves and having nice cars and that's really what it was I guess that might not exist anywhere else it really does but I guess we might have been one of the few entrepreneurs that actually took a camera and just vlogged the way we lived our lives being in the car community and building cars. So I guess it's a little different. <laughs> we just have fun and don't really care about what people think about our cars and what we do. And we get a lot of love for it. So we're very thankful and uh, very appreciative and happy to be where we are. So, Man, that is incredibly awesome, my man. <laughs> Since you're so knowledgeable, what advice do you have for people that want to become no well known on YouTube or start a YouTube channel? Um, I would say, you know, a lot of people like to say be different, right? Don't fall into doing what everybody else is doing. Um, and that is true, but I feel like maybe the best way of doing that is just really being yourself and being super authentic. You know, if you're just like, this really talented and like really savage person and that's who you are at nature and then put that on there and see how it does. If it does good then you know and and then there might be this really quirky kid that just builds like this really different car that's gonna like get probably a lot of attention because he's different but he's being himself. So I, I, it, there's really no real formula. I would say what I could pass on from experience and just studying YouTube is really pay attention to trends, really put some thought into your title and your thumbnail, make sure you have a good picture um, and something that's grabbing in, in your title, like something's gonna get, just don't give away too much, it's like a balance, you know, you, you, want, you want people to click on that video and then you wanna kinda paint that video um, 
authentically and you know as entertaining or whatever you feel is like whatever makes you attain retention on your video and then just see how it does man you just gotta put yourself out there don't think about it too much and just have fun that's the main thing man that is priceless <laughs> information thank you bro what got you into drifting Honestly, I would say I've always been into drifting. As soon as I saw those toges with Keichi Suchia uh, in the mountains. Uh, that's what really got me hooked. And then my cousin, Alan Tran, uh, he was probably the reason why I've actually even ever seen a turbo on a car. Like he, him and his dad would have these uh, super street magazines and they, he was like, hey cousin, check this out. It's a Subaru, it's got twin turbos. I was like, what's that? It makes it go really, really fast. I'm just like, oh wow, no way. And then he showed me initial D, and I was like, yo, this thing, the drifting looks really fun. You know, it was super stylish, and I was kind of like that guy that like was into skateboarding and was kind of into like steez and you know, style, so. Drifting was just kind of just seemed like to be the natural next step for me and that's why I do it. And uh, I found friends that were into it as well and we just, that's, we just pushed each other just to keep doing more and more and more. And uh, yeah, now we're here. Man, that is so awesome. And your cars are just <laughs> friggin' amazing, man. Thank you. Almost. It's, it's kind of ripped apart, but it's, it'll be there. <laughs> well, we know you're going to get it all done, Thank my man. You. you always do. Thank you. What are your future plans in drifting? Um, I definitely want to compete. Uh, TJ was like, yo, get your two pro, uh, TJ was like, get your Pro 2 license, come out and drift with me. Noah Nelson too, he's really big into it and he's talking to me about getting into it and I think that might be the next move, who knows, the Subi might be a drift car because it's really unique and I know FD really loves unique cars and different cars so if I can somehow afford to and uh, you know, if I could afford to build the Subaru that way and compete in Pro 2, I would love to, that might be the next step but it's building. We're gonna, you know, take our, take our time. We're not, not really trying to rush into it, and uh, yeah. Man, Christian, I know you're an extremely busy man, and we are so appreciative you took some time to talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, he is just a man. <laughs> and he has been so nice to me. Please, all of you that watch my channel, please like, subscribe, and comment on Christian's channel. He is just the greatest guy ever, and thank I really you, man. appreciate all the help. Absolutely. Cool. Thank man. you, brother. Yeah, anytime, man. I got you. All right, guys. We'll see you in a little bit. Well, my friends, I made it back from the road trip in one piece. And what a fun trip that was. It was so great to see all those people and catch up on old times. So I hope all of you enjoyed that. Something happened at the end when I was leaving Blocks. Dave came out and made me an honorary member of Wicked Racing, to which I understand gives me discounts at fast food restaurants and also discounts on my parts at Blocks. So another thing that can help you guys in your bills. Possibly join a race team or a club, because usually there are discounts in numbers. And on that happy note, let's call it good. I'll see you next time.